He is the brave heart of South Australian football. Passionate, brave, inspirational, invincible. He is Neil Knuckles Curley. Welcome, Curls. Thank you, Mike. You're in good nick for 80. Phil, it's only a day. It's only another day. That's all it is, another day. Is that right? A figure. That's part of your mantra. You, said you don't get old. This has got to tell you something. Stay young. Stay young. Act young. Okay. Now, you are in good nick, yeah. but you do own the most notorious pair of hands in Australian sport. Give us a look at them, mate. Hold them up. How are they going? Couldn't you mark? Or is that the result of bashing every mate, Victorian mate. that you saw? <laughs> a lot of them were from kicks on the ball. Kicks. And when you're picking up a ball. And a few people got in the way. Um, but no arthritis, so I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. What about your hip, mate? How's that going? Um, average. Mm. I've got to have it redone. So you've got a, a, an artificial hip? Uh, that was taken out the first time yep. because I stuffed that up too. And then I stuffed the second one up and then I'm living with that at the moment, but that's on the way for another operation. You've been pretty reckless in your post-retirement time, haven't you? You dived into a, the Murray River when the water was about six inches deep. Yeah, that was stupid. That was, now that's 10 years ago, just before your 70th birthday. Yeah. You dived from a, um, a wall. 10 foot high wall, yeah. 10 feet high, yeah. Yeah. The water was how deep? About that deep. That deep. And land on my noggin, fractured my skull in a couple of places. Just, just fractured the, the, the cord. The specialist couldn't work out how it didn't snap, but it didn't, thank God. Um, and uh, that was a pretty slow recovery. Mm. You would, how would you have been in a chair? You would have been impossible. I would have had a, the fastest chair on the place. <laughs> she would have been jet from turbocharged. <laughs> now, you're an icon of South Australian football. There's no question about that. Probably an icon of Australian football. But you never came to the VFL, Curls. No. Now, I know there's an inferiority complex in South Australia when Victorians ask this question. But do you regret that you never actually tried yourself at VFL level? I wouldn't have to try myself. I was coming here to play. I could have fixed <laughs> these blokes up. I, I, I told, I told Witten and Barassi, one of you guys have got to move out because there's not going to be room enough for three of us. <laughs> uh, look, we couldn't get a clearance. It was as simple as that. Is there, so you were prepared to come? I had quite a few opportunities to come from various clubs. And um, the simple reason was that there was no clearance. You had to stand out of football for 12 months if you wanted a clearance and it still wasn't guaranteed then. So... I enjoyed my footy too much to do that, Yeah. so I didn't come. So did you get close to coming to any of the Victorian clubs? Only as a coach. Only as a coach, and, and yeah. who was that with? South Melbourne. Okay. I was given the South Melbourne job. Which, which year are we talking about? Before they went to Sydney, naturally, a couple of years before yep. they went to Sydney. Yep. Um, I was given the job. So I, that was post Ian Stewart and before Ricky Quaid, was it? Was that, yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, Alan Perak was uh, CEO or secretary yep. or whatever yep. you call them. Yep. And they flew me over here. Uh, I liked the setup; it looked good. I went back home and I sat down with the wife and the kids. And m my home in Adelaide is, you know, special to me and the people I know. And I thought I don't want to leave this. It was as simple as that. Really? I so, should have. I so would the job was come. there. Yep. Any regrets about that now? Yep. Yes. Yep. I would have loved to have come over and proven to people over here that there are people outside of Victoria that can play and coach. <laughs> We're not like that, Curls. Oh, bullshit. <laughs> I was uh, fortunate enough to be one of your guests at your 80th birthday <laughs> celebration in Melbourne yeah. uh, recently. Mm. I didn't think you liked that many Victorians, actually. The bulk of them were Victorians. It's amazing. It's amazing how it's... Barassi, Bartlett, Sam Newman, uh, Dipper. Uh, Plenty of them. Now, there, there we are. There's the... There's, and Tuddy. Tuddy, great guy. Yeah. Mike Tuddy. Uh, Mike, uh, he was... Um, Eddie was there. He was good. Uh, Johnny Schultz, one of my favourite players. Yep. Loved him. It's amazing over the years when I was sort of hated by Victorians, or early years, mm. because of little things we used to do on the field. And um, <laughs> since then... The little things. The little things. Yeah. Little th since then, since then the tides turned. Uh, being boundary right of Channel 7 helped a lot. Dear Mrs Libertori, half-time when we played Footscray, half-time there was a coffee and a little bit of cake for me on the From boundary. From Libby's mum? Yep. Really? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Libby, if you're, if you're watching. Um, and the, the, like EJ, you know, EJ and I, and Brad, we were pretty fierce in those days, yep. playing days. Yep. And then EJ and I, uh, we got together so close that we became very good friends mm. and I was honoured by being a pallbearer at his funeral. Mm. 
EJ will bring a tear to your eye, won't he? I mean, you know, that, that famous uh, oh, day at the MCG yeah, when he went round that way, yeah. in the open car with, with young Ted. Ted. Couldn't see. Couldn't see. Blind. Mm. You, had a, you had an intimate moment with him that day. Yeah. Well, I just stopped the car. He didn't want to stop either, the guy. I mean, then he ran over me. Mm. And um, EJ and I just embraced him. With, and I said, there's no doubt about you. You can't keep your bloody nose out of it, can you? You've got to be involved in everything. <laughs> he said... We're going. Look at that, girls. Yeah. Now, do you remember what that's, you said I to remember, him there? Yeah, that's what I said. What oh, I just yeah, said yeah, then. Okay, yeah. And he said to me, we're going to get you blokes today. Yeah. And get, get us, they did. And you went down to the rooms. Yes. Cornsy was coaching South Australia. Yes. You said we're done, didn't you? Yeah, I, I went back in. I said, hey, we, got no, we haven't got a chance. A snowball's chance in hell. I said, uh, they're going to play for each other today, mm. which they did. You loved him, didn't you? Oh, yeah, we, were, we became like that. Mm. Uh, the same as you know, Brass and Skilts, yep. Schultze, yep. those guys I played against, they're great mates now. Do you remember the first confrontation with, with Witten? Yeah, we had yeah. a few. Um, the 66 championships in Hobart was the best one. Mm. Right there. You got him or he got he you? He got me. Yeah. Proper. Yeah. I'm waiting for one of these stupid handballs. Yep. He's come the other way and I could smell him. I, <laughs> I could hear him come. And I said, get over quick, Ted. He's gone whack. Right there. As I'm getting up, I heard one of them say, Ted, he's getting up, he's getting up. So I took my kick, chased him. Have a guess where I caught him? Standing right alongside the umpire. <laughs> I said, I'll get you later, I said. <laughs> you were jealous of Witten, weren't you? I wasn't jealous of Witten at all. You I admired so. him greatly. I thought he was great. I really was. I th he was a, not only a great player, but a great guy. Mr Football. Mr Did, Football. Were you envious of that? Only, only in Victoria was that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right, you're King Curly, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now you're talking about the, the, the Victorian bloke saying to EJ, he's getting up. You played 270 games of club footy in South Australia, is that right? Something like that. Yeah. And 32 state games. I, I was going to get to the state sorry, games, yeah. I know that. Yeah. Not, didn't leave the field once with an injury, correct? Correct. You completed every game that you started in? Yes. Okay. What about the day that the Central District bloke broke your jaw? Yeah, he hit me from behind when I was on the ground getting the ball. And I felt something wrong. It was just before half time. Mm. And I'm walking in and I'm trying to move my jaw and it's making funny noises. And I thought, I better see the head trainer. I hear something wrong. So I went to the trainer and said, oh, hang on. He said, better get the doctor and the dentist down. So which they did. And uh, they said, um, you... you You've got to come off, your, your jaw's broken. I said, well, fix it up, fix it. <laughs> True, and uh, I said, we can't fix it. So I got Laurie Rose on, the vice captain, to chew up six packs of chewies, which was good. So no. you gave him the chewy and said, chew these up, and yeah, make them into a wad. Make them into a wad, you know, because yeah, yeah. no, no mouth guards in those days. And um, I put it on and that felt, that felt pretty good. So, yeah. So you played the second half of the broken jaw? Yeah. Bit stupid. When you look at it now, mm. a bit silly, but I don't know. I, I, I just had this feeling that you don't leave the ground unless you've got a broken leg or something. But that is your image, isn't it? Like well, the, that's You could have been in the Holy Grail, couldn't you? And just so the bloke loses his limbs and he's up, but I'm all right. It's only a, <laughs> a superficial blow. <laughs> Too many players go off the ground now with, with nothing. Mind you, they're dragged off virtually, aren't they? Mm. I wouldn't mm. go off if I was playing today. Curls, the uh, Australian Football Hall of Fame is uh, created in 1996. Yep. You're not... An, or, an original inductee. Correct. Were, were you miffed at that? A little. Uh, I think there were. Um, I think there were about fourteen or fifteen. Were there South Australians coming in the first mm -hmm. intake? Mm -hmm. um, I said to Bob, "Oh, that's okay. If, if uh, Mr. Bashir doesn't think I'm worthy of a nomination, <laughs> that's fine. I'll just wait." But so got it. So I rang Matt. I said, "You left Ken Farmer out. Ken Farmer, the greatest full forward ever to play the game of football." Greatest Ken, full forward ever. Yeah, oh, yeah. Ken Farm was a better player than Tony Lockett and Jason Dunstall. No, no, no I'll, I'll rephrase that, which I, I knew I said too much. He was up there with them. And uh, he didn't get inducted either. They're all McGarry medalists, except for uh, Foss Williams and Jack O'Dea's coach. The other players were all McGarry medalists. Mr Bashir says, uh, thinks if you don't win a, haven't won a McGarry medal, you don't rate. To be fair to Max Bashir, I was on that selection committee. You were? I voted for you. I was the only one to vote for you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, uh, no. <laughs> uh, so it wasn't Max's vote entirely, Knuckles. Okay. There were about Yeah, but you've got, you got to be nominated. Yes. If you're not nominated, you can't get vote, a vote. Yeah. So if you're not nominated... Do you, think, do you think the fact that you didn't play in the VFL hurt you? 
I suppose I did, because um, it um, it's a lopsided over here with uh, VFL AFL players and coaches in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, yeah, you know that as well as I do. Uh, well, I haven't actually. I've, I haven't done the breakdown, but but I mean, do you want me to do that for you? Barry, <laughs> <laughs> I know you'll know it to the to the nth degree. Barry Robin is a legend in the oh, yeah. uh, in the uh, AFL Hall of Fame. He's the one. He's the one that I would have loved to have seen play over here, mm. and you blokes would have seen just how good he was. He was just unbelievable. And he was a great player. Well, I'm bowing to that. I mean, everyone who saw him play oh, in South Australia says the same thing. I, one day against Carlton in the championships, the end of the season, out that oval, ball's kicked out of the wing. Uh, Barry's got hold of it. Uh, somebody came at him first. I forget who it was, and Barry did a back pivot around him. But the ball was a bit wet too. No one came at him, and he blind turned around him. Jezza came at him. He ducked around Jezza, pivoted and top. Jezza just stood there and went... Really? Yep. Jezza did? Just that. Wow. Oh, Clap okay. So, so Robin was a better player than Malcolm Blight, was he? All round, yeah. Malcolm was a better high mark, a better stronger mark, maybe a stronger kick as well. But all round as a complete footballer, no, Barry was ahead of Malcolm, only by a twig. Wow. When we talked about your record before, you uh, corrected me and reminded me about your 32 state appearances. Yeah. They were another level for you, weren't they? Oh, yeah, that was it, particularly against Victoria. Yeah, yeah. so the, uh, that was the ultimate contest for you, wasn't it? My word. Yeah. I think if you want to earn your spurs as a footballer, against Victoria was the day that was the way to earn them. Okay, let's go back to 1963. Yeah, MCG. Victoria was at home to South Australia at the MCG. Yep. Jack Dyer has uh, said in advance, he said to Bobby Davis, who was coaching Victoria, he said, just give him a gentle pep talk and then take yourself off to the races because... Uh, I'll tell you what Jack Dyer said exactly. I was there because I was being I was, I was on the panel. Uh, Harry Bytel said, Jack, if you were coach of this Victorian side... What would you do? He said, I'd give him a pep talk and go to the races. <laughs> and Harry turned to me and said, what do you think of that young Curly? I said, well, everybody's entitled to their opinion. So I, I, was, I was a bit chuffed. Mm. So we had a photo next, next day, the South Australian boys, St Kilda Ground. And um, I said to Foss, I said, I'd like to have a, just have a few words with the boys, please. Yeah, cool, of course now. So what age are you then? 63? Oh, I was 20, uh, 63, I was 29. Okay. Yeah. And... Um, I said, fellas, at the opening bounce day, something's going to happen. I said, but don't, don't get involved. Keep right out of it. I'll look after these fellas. Don't worry about that. And the ball was bounced and up it went. And I'm on this side, manual labourer, in a gym all day virtually. The other side was a school teacher, carries a piece of chalk and a pencil all day. <laughs> and we collided and he went down. Who, who was he? Alistair Lord. Alistair Lord, the Brownlow medalist. Yeah. Mm. And he fell over. He fell and over, did he? He fell over, yeah. Mm. In and your vicinity? Yeah, just there. Mm. And uh, they, they, I feel the Vicks came in like little blowflies and started <laughs> buzzing around. And, and we kicked three goals in seven minutes. And that was virtually, we, had to, we still had to get the lead back in the last quarter, which we did. So you beat the Vicks at the MCG. I, I suspect, Curls, that that is the ultimate achievement in your Can't career. Can't get better than that. That's it? Can't get better than that. I mean, you've got premierships as a player and as a oh, coach. Oh, yeah. They were, they were great, but... This was an ultimate team effort. And uh, the Vicks had open selection that, that year, not two from this side and mm. one from this side and that type of thing. They had open selection. And um, we beat them. Mm. I'll never... Oh, it was... Geez, you're excited, aren't you? Well, uh, that was a special moment in footy for me. Yeah. Why did you make Bobby Skilton your punching bag? I mean, was it something he said or... You, no, I didn't. you envious of him I, or what? No, I... I EJ thought I hit him one day yeah. over in Adelaide and uh, he didn't, he ran into Colin Brown's knee and opened his eye up. So they're on the, on the ground at quarter time and EJ said, look what that Curly did to Skilt, the chimp, look what he did, split his eye open. And Chimp said, it wasn't Curly, shut up, they don't know that. Look, <laughs> get, let's get Curly. Well, they gave me a bit of fun in the last half. Did the Vicks get you? Did, you, did anyone? Oh, yeah, I, I copped a bit, don't worry, I copped my share. Mm. You know, cut eyes. That from Dittrick, well, he, was, he was the worst. D Carl, most dangerous. Carl. He was the most dangerous. Despite the fact that you have shrunk just a fraction, you were, you were the number one ruckman, weren't you? You were an, a knock ruckman. Uh, yeah, but n not in state stuff. You were. So whether uh, you were Occasionally. Yeah. I was, I was more or less brass, ruck rover top yep, yep. Yeah. But I did play full forward, full back, centre half forward, centre half back. You, my, if, if, if people ask me about Neil Curley, I tend to say he was the South Australian Barassi. Is that, would you say that you're most like him or is there someone uh, Barassi is the Victorian... 
No, clearly. <laughs> What's your name, Matt? <laughs> You're into no, QU blokes, aren't pretty you? Pretty similar, pretty similar. Curls, you started at West Adelaide in 1952. Correct. Played one game and yep. then disappeared for three years. What happened? Well, I was doing national service and uh, I met a big guy up there who became a very good friend of mine. He said, what are you doing after? I said, well, I don't know. I'm, I'm just a labourer, a uh, truck driver. He said, why don't you come to Woomera? I said, Woomera? Yeah, come on. We've got a team up there way out in the Coolie Milker. So up we go, way out in the bush. And he takes me out to Coolie Milker. And I was the bus driver and all that type of thing and um, he heavy plant equipment driver, bulldozers, that graders, those sort of things. And um, came three weeks before the first game. They, they'd won a game the year before. One the night they're going to have a coach. And so someone nominated me. And I said, hey, wait, 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 I've never coached in my life. I don't know what to do. But you're 19, aren't you? 18 then. 18, yeah. And so second, I'm coach. So, oh, all right, well, we've, we've, got, we've got to start training, I guess. We had one old fat football <laughs> and uh, went down. The grader had graded the big stones off the oval and the little ones are still left, but seven. I had seven out for training, three weeks before the first game. Thursday night before the first game, I had 15. No jumpers, nothing. First game we played, I had 15 players with no jumpers. We lost. And we lost the next one, we lost the next one. Grazzy got out, we got our jumpers, and Grazzy picked up a couple of players, and we started to win. And we won the premiership. See, the, the, the intri intriguing thing about this story, and you say it, tell it with such enthusiasm now, at your 80th birthday, you mentioned one club, and one club only, and it was that club, Good the club. junior footy club. Well, yeah. that was a pretty special achievement, that was. like. I got these bunch of rugby players and, mm. and this and uh, but but I could play. I played one league game, so I could play a little bit. Matter of fact, I won the, the male medal by fourteen votes. I think it was. Who plays today like the way you played? If you look at someone, you sort of say, Archer. Yeah, yeah, Glenn yeah Archer. yesteryear. Yeah, yeah. Archer. Yeah. I think pretty similar. Yep. Yeah. The same height, roughly. Yep. Yeah. There's a lot of players I like. I love watching play footy, mm. and I love watching the real skillful players play too. Yep. Yeah. As long as they've got a little bit of when, that, when it's there to stay on the line, they've got to stay on the line. Yeah. You don't come off the line. What about your time at West Adelaide? You started playing football at West Adelaide. Yep, yep. Now, tell me, correct me if I'm wrong here, my understanding was that you coached West Adelaide to a premiership in 61, is First that year, yep. The second year you took them to the grand final and were beaten. Three points. You won the best and fairest in both those years. Yep. And you got the sack. Yep. How does that happen? I had a run in with uh, the president a bit didn't like the way they weren't looking after the players. Hot drinks after some games and all this type of stuff. Well, they're sipping cold beer in the room next door at the fridge and they're serving us hot drinks. Just that's one instance. Quite a few others. And uh, so we, we, we clashed a bit. And um, so they sacked me. They sacked you after two grand finals and two best and fairest. And, and, and even as almost equally as surprising as that, you honoured your contract and played at the same club the next year. They wouldn't clear me. They wouldn't clear me. There was no contracts in those days. It was just well, didn't you have an agreement? Did it... No, no yeah. agreements in those days. Okay, so they just wouldn't clear you. Just wouldn't clear me. And uh, so I played under Doug Thomas, who I'd coached the year before. Yeah, yeah. And I think we got beaten in the first semi. And um, then I left the following year. Which, which was, you, you coached five clubs in South Australia. Yep. Which was the most enjoyable period of your coaching life? Uh, so South was great. I had three great years there. You know, I really enjoyed that just for the one flag only, unfortunately. Um, but Glenelg, I had 10 great years at Glenelg. Um, I think I'd Look have to that. say- Who's that remind you of? Although yeah. you still like that, actually. He looks a bit angry, yeah. doesn't he? <laughs> he does look angry. I don't know why he's angry, he must be losing. <laughs> None of that was fabricated, was it? That's all you. It was, the anger was genuine. Well, you don't put anything on. You've got you to be honest and dink them. Mm. Um, that's how I've been all my life, with people. And it's got me in a bit of hot water occasionally with certain officials, that type of thing, but mm. I couldn't give a stuff. And you say what you think is correct and um, don't take shortcuts. I wouldn't have picked you as being a, a master strategist as a coach. Uh, that's where you're wrong, see. Is it? That's yeah. about the only mistake I've ever seen you make. <laughs> um, Thanks, No, I, I, I knew a bit about the game. I didn't say you didn't know a bit about the game. But I, I knew players. Thought... Yeah, OK. I, can, I understood players because mm. I was a... People's person. Uh, being, a, being coming from the bush as a kid and starting work in the country. You left uh, school at 14? 16 years, yeah, 14. Mm. Went bush at 16 years of age on my little old motorbike 
and started working among men and you get to know people and understand people. And that's the, the, I reckon that's the best thing that I took on as a coach that I can understand people and know how to handle people. And that's one of the problems with coaches today. Like Matty Primus, poor devil, way out of his depth at Port Adelaide, just didn't know how to put the two Corns boys back to Glenelg. Mm. Like, ridiculous. Mm. Just didn't know how to handle people. If you can't understand people as a person who wants to control people, you've got a big problem. When we come back, I want you to name me the best crow of all time. You were the original footy manager at the Adelaide Crows, 1991. Mm. Mm. I always had the sense that you didn't actually enjoy that all that much, that role, that administrative role. It didn't suit me, but uh, I, I did it to the best of my ability. Um, I, I would have liked to have the coaching job, um, but uh, Graham got that and he did a great job. Were you in for that job? Uh, I wasn't in for it, but uh, the name was, I think, presented. But I, I didn't write an application or anything. Um, uh, but Graham got it, and because I'd coached Graham for quite a few years, and I knew what he was capable of. He was always trying to tell me what to do as coach. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but he he proved to be a very very good coach, and he was just unlucky not to on that game against Essendon. weren't you five or six goals up that day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The third quarter, and yeah, uh, yeah he, he, we just lost the last quarter, which was a bad one. But Graham did a great job as coach. 1997, 98, your Adelaide team. It's the yeah. team that you love and you were connected with and you're yeah. then the boundary rider for Channel 7, you see them win two flags. Correct. Uh, must have been a massive thrill for you. I don't think there's any other coach in Australia could have coached those two sides to premierships. We had very average sides. I think we had five rejects from other clubs in those sides. Uh, we lost Rashudo in one game, we lost Modern mm. in the other. Um, but Malcolm just got them believing in themselves as an individual and as a group that they could win. Was that the day when you were in your Channel 7 role and you're part of the media and you're supposed to tell us at home all the information that you can glean that you refused to tell the blokes upstairs what had been said to you? Was that the day? What, what, what had been said to me? Yeah. Oh, I can't do that. <laughs> I, mean, I, can't I thought you were in the media. Opposition coach might hear it. <laughs> Can't do that, that was one of the funniest things I've ever heard, though. <laughs> Someone said upstairs to you, Kills, what did he say? He said, I'm not telling you. Yeah, because they could have a spy up there and they'd run the damn... Oh, message. sorry, I misunderstood. I thought you were supposed to inform us about what was happening. <laughs> I only informed you of certain things. I can't, I can't give you coaches secrets. <laughs> now, you mentioned Mark Rusciuto. Yeah. He's from the Riverland, yeah. as you were. Yeah. You recruited... You, you tied him up for the Crows, did you not? Correct. How did you do that? I went up to watch him play this day. He was uh, 16. And he'd been playing centre half back. I thought, I want to go and have a look at this kid playing centre half back. So I rang his dad, Murray, stayed to place me alongside the boundary to park my car. I had the esky full of <laughs> beer because Murray liked to drink. And uh, I get there and blah, blah, blah. And I said, gee, I'm looking forward to the boy playing centre half back today. And his brother was there, he was injured. And he couldn't play. And he said, No, he's not playing centre half back. I said, Where's he playing? He said, He's playing forward pocket. I said, Forward pocket? I don't want to see him play forward pocket. Kicked 11. Did he? Yeah. <laughs> And that was a pretty tough comp, wasn't it? Yeah, well, that night we emptied the esky. Uh, Murray, <laughs> Murray and I, but we, but we got the signature. <laughs> oh, it was a tough, it was yeah. tough comp, don't worry about yeah. that. Who is the best Adelaide Crows player that we've seen, Curls? That's a tough one. There's been some goodies, as you know. Um, I would say, I'd say it's between three. McLeod, Rashido, Hart. Okay. And I, I think I'd go Rue because uh, he was a hard ball getter. Whereas McLeod was silky smooth and I could do anything virtually. And Hardy was similarly on them, very good back there. But <coughs> Rue was a leader, an inspirational leader, uh, I think was number one. I want to ask you about uh, a current player. In five years' time, how will we rate Paddy Dangerfield? Yeah. He's Victorian too. I know that. Don't I'm you still think going to tick him after? though. I'm still going to tick him. He's uh, When he learns to use the brain a bit better, mm -hmm. which he had to in the first couple of years, he wasn't using his brain at all. He was like a bulldog. And like he, the way, way he crashes into packs and people, and there's no, there's no fear at all in his body, not one ounce of fear. He's extremely talented. And as you know, when he gets a ball, if he's inside 50 or even outside 50, he can wax it. Mm. Oh, he's going to be an out-and-out -out champion. He's going to be up there with your champions today, your Swan, your Selwood, your Ablett. No, don't know about quite that good. Um, 
Now, to me, just before you leave that, so you're saying Gary Ablett is on a plane of his own. I think he's pretty special. Mm. Very special. He, the, the, the way he gets out of he he plays with his brain. Mm. Blake once said to me, you get a player that plays with his brain, he's a good player. You get a bloke that plays with his heart, he's a good player. But when you get a bloke that plays with his heart <laughs> and his brain, you got your champion. Yeah. That's Ablett. Yeah. I know what your mantra is, is to just forget about the past and live for the day and keep your brain active. But just reflecting on your, your life, is there a regret? I guess, uh, I don't know about a, a, a regret, a disappointment that in five grand finals at Glenelg, we won one, mm. which is a pretty poor effort. So I mark myself as a bit of a failure there. Um, I guess, and not coming to Victoria. That is a regret. You if, finally if, admit that, do you? <laughs> you finally if, admit that you would have liked to have played in the major competition. Yeah, well, <laughs> here we go, the major. <laughs> You're not bad, are you? Um, if I could have walked out of there and played here the following year, the study, yes, I would have come for a couple of years maybe. Um, you never told me before, were, were you coming to a specific club or you just would have said, I'm ready to go to Melbourne? Yes, and we're, we're very persistent and yep. so would you long, Bobby yep. Davis. Yep. Uh, I would have been with Polly. Mm. Whoa, whoa. We so were, we're talking early 60s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that's a regret. Um, and I guess not coming as a coach with South. I just, I just didn't want to leave. I was very good where I was. I, I, I loved I love my lifestyle. Pick up the phone, ring anybody and, yep. okay, come up, curls, come up, come up. And, hey, we all sometimes, that's why they put rubber on the end of pencils. We sometimes make mistakes. Yeah, okay, okay. Hey, curls, it's been a genuine thrill to talk to you and have the history lesson that you've been able to give me. <laughs> really enjoyed it. I've loved the fact that we've become mates over the years. Uh, happy 80th again and uh, good luck for the future. Thanks, Mike. Enjoyed it very much. This has been a Fox Footy production for Fox Sports.